Hey, I'm Neil from the Canon Collective. When it comes to street photography, there's dedicated gear that will help you refine your detail and get the most out of your shot. Today I'm going to take you through what I normally pack in my kit when I'm shooting street. So let's run through my photography kit. For starters, a nice comfy strap. We're working with the brand new Canon EOS R. Now as you'll see, it looks a little bit bigger than normal. That's because I've got a battery pack on here to ensure that when I'm out shooting, the last thing I want to be doing is changing batteries over. So we have two batteries in there. I'm also working with the RF50, which is a 1.2 lens. This is the sharpest lens that Canon's ever made, and you'll absolutely see that with all of your street photography results. We also have the control ring on the front. And the best part about that control ring is I have it set to change ISO. So when you're out doing street photography, quick turn of the ring, and it completely changes your ISO. Absolutely perfect for street photography. Last thing is my headphones. I have these so that I'm in my own world when I'm doing street photography. As you'll notice, I don't have a backpack with me. That's because when I go out and shoot street photography, all I need is my camera and my headphones. Because when I'm out shooting, I want to be incognito. I want people to think I'm not paying attention to them. So that's when my headphones come right into it. So my top tips for street photography are to start with shutter speed. So shutter speed is absolutely the key with street photography. The difference between using a slow shutter speed and a fast shutter speed can completely change your photo altogether. The thing about street photography is that you have no say on what's gonna happen. It's the best part about it. So if you've got a nice fast shutter speed, if there's any dramatic movements, you're gonna capture them. A slow shutter speed can provide you with a completely different outlook on a very basic scene. If you've got a bicycle coming through and you use a nice slow shutter speed and you use a panning technique, you'll find that that'll create a vast world that you've never even seen before. So next time you're out doing street photography, try dropping your shutter speed nice and low to say 1 15th of a second and see what results you get. So my second tip for street photography is to always check your light. Whenever you're moving to a new scene or a new street, meter your light as soon as you get there. With street photography, nothing's predictable. So the last thing that you want to do is lift your camera up and be ready to shoot and your light's completely wrong. So if you move to a new scene, meter your light to ensure you get a fast shoot time. One of the best things about Canon's new mirrorless range is a silent shutter. This is gonna give you the ability to get very close to your subject. Some of the best street photography photos ever taken are this close from the subject. So absolutely try out that new silent shutter. Street photography can absolutely be very daunting. You're going out and taking photos of people and they have no idea who you are and you have no idea who they are. So one thing to really look at when you're first getting started is get yourself a nice long lens such as a 70 to 200. What this will allow you to do is get nice and close and capture a very tight frame. That way, you don't have to be worried about being too close to someone you don't know and taking their photo. And as you progress through your street photography journey, try shorter and shorter lenses. Something like a 50mm is what I use all the time. With 51.2, you have to get nice and close to fill your frame, but you've got that 1.2 aperture to make sure your background's all blurred out and it's nice and sharp. 